blood types. Also, the working title of this script has been Blood Cookies. Do with that what you will. Hey, hi. Okay, so it's me. As you may or may not know, I basically live in a hospital at the moment. Quick rundown. Basically, my partner has been diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma, which is one of the fastest growing human cancers, and will be hospitalized continuously for the next couple months receiving really intensive chemotherapy, which is obviously very scary and has been super overwhelming and has all happened really fast <laughs> and our lives are really different now. And basically the only way that both of us have been able to stay like marginally sane because we're both science minded, very curious people. Um, you know, we've definitely been the kind of patient who wants to learn as much as possible about what's happening. So learning more about the cancer, about his diagnosis, about treatment, what it is and how it works, dealing with all the medical vernacular has been something that's been you know, helped us feel a little more empowered and helped us deal with how scary and overwhelming all of this is. Like if we can focus on the good parts about learning new things, um, that's really been helping us get through a time. I'm also stress baking, which actually is gonna serve another purpose in this video, so stay tuned. I'm listening to Disney hits while I do it. What of it? Not so fun cancer fact. When you undergo chemotherapy, especially for a blood cancer like lymphoma or leukemia, you run the risk of having low blood counts. So they keep really good track of those throughout your treatment. And when we say blood counts, we mean three things. We mean white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. White blood cells, which are also referred to as leukocytes, are a big part of your immune system. They're an immune cell that's carried by your blood through your vascular system. They help you fight off infection. And so if you are uh, leukopenic or you have low white blood cells, that means that you're immunodeficient or immunocompromised and you're at big risk of infection if you come near people who are sick or if you have a wound that is open, it may not heal properly, it may get infected way more so than if your white blood cells were at healthy levels. The second thing we talk about is the red blood cells or RBCs. These are also known as erythrocytes and these have a specialized protein on them called hemoglobin and that's what binds to your oxygen. All of the oxygen that you're taking in through your lungs, your pulmonary system is binding to that hemoglobin on the red blood cells and being carried to the rest of your body. So if you have low red blood cell count, you may feel fatigued, you may feel short of breath um, because the rest of your body isn't receiving the oxygen that it should. And the last thing we talk about is not actually even a whole cell, it's a fragment of a cell. They're called platelets or thrombocytes. And this is what helps your blood to clot. So say if you accidentally cut yourself in the kitchen while you're cooking, um, you notice that after a while it stops bleeding and that's because those thrombocytes are sort of accumulating at the wound site and clogging it up so that the rest of your blood doesn't come spilling out. Um, so if you're low on platelets, that means that your blood can't clot properly. And if you were to injure yourself or say if you're about to have surgery, you would just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, which is obviously not a good thing because you would lose too much blood. Now, the way that chemo affects your blood counts is different based on what kind of cancer you have and what kind of chemo you're receiving. But in general, to take things super simplistic and super generalized, cancer is a disorder of cell replication. So if you have cancer, something's gone wrong with your cells life cycle. Like there's way too many of them and they're replicating too fast and they don't die. That means that they are accumulating in like big clumps, which we call tumors, and taking energy and nutrients away from other parts of your body that need it. Chemotherapy is a, a mix of drugs that's targeted to your certain cancer, so it totally depends on what kind of cancer you have, what kind of chemotherapy drugs you receive. It can be a bunch of different drugs. They just call all of that kind of cancer treatment chemotherapy. But generally, chemo drugs are meant to target really fast replicating cells, aka the cancer. 
The problem is that there's also fast replicating cells in your healthy body. So take your hair, for example. The cells in your hair follicles are making new hair all the time. That means the cells there are being born and replicating and dying way faster than a lot of the rest of your body. So chemotherapy, while it's attacking the cancer, is a bit of a blunt instrument in that it also attacks pretty much any cell that is fast dividing or fast replicating in your body, and that includes your hair. Um, that's why many people who undergo chemotherapy lose their hair, not just on their head, but all over their body, because those cells replicate really, really fast to keep producing new hair. That's why your hair grows. Chemo also affects the cells that are inside the lining of your gut and in your mouth and your whole digestive tract. All of those cells have really high turnover as well because they're super active and they have a really important job. So they're being born and replicating and dying super fast also. And this can be one of the reasons why patients receiving chemo can feel nauseous, can have diarrhea, anything that involves like an upset of the gastrointestinal system. And the relevant place to this video, one of the main places that your cells replicate super fast is in your bone marrow because that's where your blood begins. And because your blood gets replenished all the time, that means that the cells in the bone marrow that produce that blood, that become blood, are also affected by chemotherapy. So that's why your blood counts usually decrease when you're on chemo. So anyway, here we are, the main question of this video, blood types. Who can receive what kind of blood and why is that important and what do the kinds mean? And I'm going to use a delicious visual aid from previously aforementioned stress baking to help me out. So there are four main kinds of blood groups, group A, group B, group AB, and group O. The blood type names refer to the presence or absence of two different antigens, type A and type B. So type A blood has type A antigens on it. Type B blood has B antigens. AB has both kinds of antigens. And type O has neither. See, all of our body cells have different surface markers. And these can be sugars or proteins, but they help differentiate them to do their specific job, to bind to different carrier molecules. They basically help them be what they are. But importantly, antigens also identify from our body's perspective what is our own and what is foreign. So if our body detects an antigen, a surface structure that it doesn't recognize, it tells the immune system, attack that thing, it doesn't belong here, we don't want it, get it out of us, it's bad for us. So obviously this is really important when transfusing blood because you are doing this to help the person's health, maybe to save their life. So you obviously don't want that person's body to go into shock, to have a really adverse reaction, especially if they're already sick or injured, to the blood that you're giving them to help them get better. We have to match the antigens, whatever surface structure on those blood cells to help make sure that that person's body doesn't see that incoming new blood and say, ah, this is different, this is scary, we don't like it, get it out and have a bad reaction. Now we've talked about the two big categories, the antigens A and B, but there's also an additional factor that complicates things a little bit called the RH factor. And it's a surface protein as well. And your blood cells can either have it or they don't. And that's what makes your blood type either positive or negative. So if you have the RH factor, you're positive. And if you don't have it, you're negative. So that's the whole total spectrum of blood types. We've got A negative, A positive, B negative, B positive, AB negative, AB positive, O positive, and O negative. It does actually even get like more complicated than that. There's even more detail involved, but if you're interested in like a super crazy high level of technical detail, I've left a, an awesome paper down in the description below that you can check out to fill up on that nerd factor. But for most of us, all you need to know is A and B and the RH factor. The cool thing about thinking about all of this and the way that it helps me understand it is that it's all about the presence of an antigen, the presence of something that your body would perceive as foreign. So for example, blood type O negative is the universal donor because it lacks all antigens. It doesn't have antigen A, it doesn't have antigen B, and it doesn't have the RH factor. It's negative. Barring any like strange immunodeficiencies or an immune disease, nobody's body will have a negative reaction to you giving it O negative blood. So that means that this is the kind of blood that is in the highest demand in emergencies when you may not have the time to check what blood type someone is and you need to give them a transfusion safely. Now here's a good time to say that ideally healthcare 
providers do actually like to perfectly match someone's blood type just to make like sure that their body isn't gonna have a crazy adverse response just in case but um usually if you're in a pinch if you don't have a certain kind of blood type you can go by these fast and easy rules back to blood types a b specifically a b positive can receive from anyone because a b positive has all of the antigens they have antigen a antigen b and the RH factor, so any blood that you give them will not contain any foreign antigens. They already have all of them. None of it will look strange to their immune system. You can give any of it to them safely. Okay, let's run through the rest real quick. O positive can donate to anyone positive because remember they have the RH factor, so they can only safely donate to other people with the RH factor. So O positive can give to A positive, B positive, and AB positive. A positive can give to A positive and to AB positive because it doesn't matter what antigens it's lacking, it only matters what antigens it has. And so A negative can give to A positive, A negative, AB positive, and AB negative. Same with B. B positive can give to B positive and AB positive, but B negative can give to B positive and negative, AB positive, and AB negative. And AB is the most limited in terms of donating. It can only give to fellow AB types. AB positive can only give to fellow AB positive. And AB negative can give to AB positive and AB negative. So that's the basics on blood types with a little extra primer on cancer and chemo and the different components of your blood just thrown in for good measure. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was interesting. If anyone out there is going through something similar or if you or a loved one has needed transfusion for whatever reason, I hope that this has helped you understand it a little more and helped alleviate your anxieties like it has mine. Learning more about whatever crazy thing is happening has always made me feel better. So I hope I hope it does for you too. Now I'm gonna go give these cookies to the nurses at the hospital because they do such important work and holy if you have a nurse in your life please hug them and love them because they have like one of the hardest jobs in the world and they make such a huge difference and their job is so important oh my god and also i've just hit about 1300 subscribers which is crazy and i never thought would actually happen thank you guys so much for being here and for watching and for supporting me I make these videos just because I love them and I think they're interesting and I would lo be looking this stuff up on my own just because I think it's cool and I want to know more. But if you want to help support me to make more of them, I don't get paid to make them. But I set up a Patreon. It's down in the description box below. You can donate a certain amount every month for different kinds of thank yous. be a part of the community through patreon and help support me to make more videos like this so that would be awesome i'm sending positive healing and healthy vibes out there to all of you in the world i hope you're doing really well and i'll see you next time Bye.